Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mm. Today's, um, today's letter from God to us is a very wonderful and pleasant one. Praise the Lord. That's letter to the Philadelphia Church. In fact, the closing aspect of it, the action point, if you want to if you want your faith to last to the end, become a soul winner. I think that's the I think I still mentioned that thing yesterday at the um, evangelism yesterday. We thank God for that. When we are praying, when we are praying for evangelism, we wanted to go. When we are doing the prayer, I mention it. I mention it. Thank God for that. So we thank God for this morning, the Open Heaven devotional today, written by Pastor Ia Deboye, August 18, 2022. The, let, the topic is Letter to the Philadelphia Church, Part 1. The memory verse is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. It says, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of good that perishes, though it's being tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that is First Peter chapter one verse seven. So the Bible passage was taken from. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 to 13. Revelation 3, 7 to 13. Glory be to God. So, like Baba has rightly said and written here, say Jesus was full of praises for Philadelphian church. He gave them several promises, only warned them to hold fast. What a beautiful letter. You know, yeah, Jesus, the same spirit of Jesus Christ that was giving this revelation to Apostle John. He has given a revelation about Church of Sardis. He has given a revelation about Church of a um, series of churches now. And we had all the revelation he gave about all those ones. We go one saying, Shira Dada. How they are doing rubbish, how they allow Jezebel, how they are fornicating, how they are doing teaching blasphemy, and also. But unto this church, he gave a pleasant letter and revelation about them. He said they are very fast, they, they are strong, they are doing well, they are winning so. The church in Philadelphia. So that shows that. God is monitoring every one of us, how we live. That's the implication. So all the churches all over the world, God is monitoring them. The way the dream Christian job, God is behaving now, God is monitoring. The way deeper life is behaving now, God is monitoring. The way Anglican church is behaving now, God is seeing it. The way Celestial Church of Christ is doing, God is seeing it. The way they are doing Kirubi and Seraphim, God is in. And he's writing everything down. The way they are allowing the Holy Spirit to take control in churches, in very various churches, God is in. The way we are allowing money, money, the spirit of mammon, the way we are worshipping the spirit of mammon in various churches now, God is in it. The way we are more worshipping positions. I want to become a bishop. I want to become general overseer. I want to become continental overseer. I want to become pastor. I want to become a regional pastor. I want to become an evangelist. And because of that, you now bribe, you bribe your way, you do it. God is seeing everything. And the way you are living your life personally to God is seeing you. So that, that shows that God is not a respecter of person. You know, he has written some letters to some other churches. Now he's writing to Philadelphia now. And we can see that he 
commended is commending um, Philadelphia. He commended them for their steadfastness. You see, and he, 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 we are made to understand that in, in uh, AD 17, after the death of Jesus Christ, 17 years, after the death of Jesus Christ, there was serious earthquake, a serious terrorism, terrorism serious wahala came up upon all the churches. But the church of Philadelphia stood firm. The way um, blasphemy and um, Jezebel, fornication, adultery, um, idolatry, um, mammon spirit, mammy water spirit was ramp rampaging the church all around during that time. They couldn't overcome the church of Philadelphia. Why? Because they are so winners. That's the conclusion. Because they are what? Because they are so winners. You see, when you win soul, I said it, it's what I notice, what I've experienced now. With my years of uh, worship in the Lord, with my years of serving and worshiping God, at least since 1989, the date, I've experienced so many things, ups and downs. I've risen, I've fallen, I've risen, I've fallen. I've... So I've experienced ups and downs. So I can now conclude, deduce and conclude that it is only the soul winner that can stand. And that is the secret of Pastor Iyadeboye now. That is why you see the man still standing. Baba Adeboye, that's why the man is still standing year by year. And he's not falling because he keep on winning soul. And the word of God has established it. The word of God says, he that winneth soul shall be pruned. He said, the, the tree that, that bring forth fruit shall be pruned. It shall be cleansed so that it will bring more fruit. Say, the tree that does not bring forth fruit shall be cut off. So if you see a Christian that is rising and falling, rising and falling, rising and falling. Zigzag, zigzag. Check his life. It's not winning soul. But if you see a Christian that is moving straight, he having a steady trend, uptrend. Steady uptrend, moving from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory, moving higher, moving higher every day. Check his life. He must be a winning soul Christian. He must be a Christian that I'll evangelizing, that are talking about Jesus Christ to people. Because automatically when you are talking about Jesus Christ to people, God himself will be washing you. He will be cleaning you. He will be making you to be steadfast so that you will not fall. He said it. Only Only the tree that does not bear fruit shall be cut off. And be casted to fire. That's what the Bible says. So that's the secret. The secret of steadfastness in the Lord is swinging so. That's what is that what reflected in the life of the church in Philadelphia. That's what is reflecting in the life of Baba Adeboye. Every day. Imagine. Okay, look at it on the uh, Holy Ghost service, the just concluded con convention. Reverend Joe Olaya has preached. He made another call. Thousands of people came out. Abby, when Baba was preaching again, in fact, within me I was saying, what, what would Baba say again? Instead of instead, Baba should just come and just pray for people and let us go. And because I Baba all I has treated everything, and he has made the other call, and everywhere was flooded. Kilotuku. Hmm. But see a man of God. Baba, when he got to the altar and he started the teaching again, it was another a dimension totally. And the Holy Spirit took control. He made another call. The way the place was flooded again. He, he himself was even saying, Paraventure, you are you came late. 
Because I know my son has made the Halia altar call and people have given their, their life to So, per adventure, you came late. That means Baba himself too was not even expecting anybody or crowd again. He was not expecting crowd again. He, said, he, he himself was saying, per adventure, you came late and you are just hearing this message and you want to give your life to Jesus. Come now. I come from 1 to 15. 1. And it started, and the place, in fact, at a point I was thinking, people will not come again. By the time he can't have one, two, three, I, I couldn't see people coming. Until when he was reaching five, six, seven, ah, before you know it, the altar has, has flooded with souls. Tell me, and I look at it, and say, okay, this papa again, see the number of souls, Tell me, will God allow such a person to fall? God will know. He will be making him to be more rising and rising and rising in the Lord. So the day you feel comforted, comfortable, and you say, I'm not, I'm not preaching again. I'm not doing the work of God again. I'm comfortable now. That day, that person started falling. That's what happened in the life of Solomon. When Solomon was offering sacrifices unto God, was praising God, God was happy about him. And God was blessing him in no ramification, Abby. God was promoting him. But the moment he relaxed and he said, ah, I'm okay, I'm arrived now. What happened? He started falling. He started falling, he started worshiping idol. And he fell completely. The same thing happened, applicable to David. When David was moving from one battle to another. He was taking challenges. He was serving God. But the very day he refused to go to battle and he fell relaxed and he went to the balcony over the upstairs of his building. He was relaxing. Don't battle, don't win. Don't battle, don't make a crime. He was just only kill be the issue. You see, when you are, when you, when you are high do, when you are high do, you are moving all around aimlessly. When you don't have a focus, I'm going for evangelism. I'm going for Bible study. I'm going for um, prayer meeting. I'm, I want to take a fasting tomorrow. I want to go for a choir meeting tomorrow. When you don't have all those targets for each day, then Satan will get you a target. Oh my gosh, I when, when David was moving all around aimlessly on the, on the roof of his building, he went to the roof and he started falling. So when you are high do, for, when you are high do, you are not doing anything for God, you are no more winning soul, then you'll be falling. So the secret of the Church of Philadelphia is that they were not idle. They were winning so for Jesus Christ. And that's why they are strong. And the ba and Baba was Baba the boy is saying now that even to today that the church of Philadelphia is still existing. While most all other churches have no more because of the um, um, rampaging of um, um, Mohammedans rampaging them all around them. All of them, the Turkey, the church in Turkey, the church of Bubu the is the Muslim. Turkey is now a Muslim country. Bubu all those church countries, they are now Muslims' country. But the church in Philadelphia, because he is strong and he was winning, so the church is still existing even to date. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So if you want to keep existing in the Lord, keep moving. Take challenges. Tell God, give me this mountain. Give me this mountain. I want to go for fasting today. I want to do prayer tomorrow. I want to do Bible study. I want to go for evangelism. Keep doing something for God on daily basis. And be praying for the power of the Holy Spirit on daily basis. On daily basis, you must pray for the power of what? Holy Spirit. Don't rely on the power of the Holy Spirit of yesterday. On daily basis, request for the new power of the Holy Spirit. On weekly basis, every Sunday, request for weekly power of the Holy Spirit. 
on monthly basis request for the monthly power of the Holy Spirit, on yearly basis request for the yearly power of the Holy Spirit. And that is what we that is what can keep us moving. Then you keep on evangelizing everywhere, anywhere, on social media, on your, your phone, on whatever, in your class, in your sitting room, in your place of work. Make sure you keep talking to people about Jesus Christ. And by so doing, God will be pruning you, he'll be washing you clean, and you'll be steadfast.